Okay, we're now recording. So this is um, the public deliberation in the case involving, uh, well, it, the petition for a special hearing uh, regarding 2621 and 2623 Brannon Road, which is in the 15th election district, the 7th Council Manic District, the legal owner being Edgemere Wildlife Trust. Uh, it is case number 2022-269-SPH. And we had the uh, a hearing, um, actually we had a, a live hearing on this matter, um, the exact date of which is, eludes me at the moment. But um, this matter concerns a non-conforming use at the subject property. Um, the non-conforming use was deemed, um, uh, was, was found to be, um, found to be in 2004, I believe it was. Um, and it's been, and, and the, the non-conforming use essentially was uh, the uh, was operating as a duplex or being a duplex, and this area is zoned for single-family dwellings only. So it's existed as a non-conforming use since uh, the early 2000s, and it now uh, the special hearing is a petition by the neighbors um, to 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 find uh, to ask us whether we believe that the non-conforming use has expired uh, or been eliminated or relinquished um, for any number of different reasons. Um, so we heard from uh, a number of witnesses um, for the property owner. We heard from Mr. Pottles, who is the um, uh, um, property manager. We heard from um, an engineer and we heard from a draftsman essentially about efforts to remodel the house to make it uh, more suitable. Um, we heard from the neighbor, any number of different neighbors who testified uh, that the property was kind of a nuisance and that, but most significantly that um, um, one or more of the units had been vacant uh, for at least a year um, before any of the, well, before the before the uh, renovations occurred. Um, and then, of course, we also heard about the the renovations, which resulted in actually raising the house. Um, so there are any number of different issues. And uh, I don't know if anyone wants to start. Anyone's interested in offering some views here? There are, you know, there are a lot of issues. Um, some of which I think are are frankly secondary. For example, I, I think I raised the question of whether there was evidence of discontinuance from 2004 to 2019. I think I asked someone a question about that, and the the parties, uh, particularly the petitioners, provided some evidence of that, but I, in my own estimation, that evidence was pretty equivocal and quite unconvincing. And so um, that issue that I raised, I, I, I'm happy to dispense with. I, I think that there's, there's insufficient evidence to show that it was abandoned during that period of time anyway. Um, there's a question again, a maybe a corollary question or a secondary question about whether um, if there's a if there's a, a legitimate tenancy, um, but the tenant is not occupying the the the, the uh, property that's being leased, whether that's an abandonment or not. Or whether that's you know whether that count, can count as an abandonment or not. My my own my own view is that it it can't. If someone has a legal right to the property, then 
whether the person is actually inhabiting the property or not doesn't detract from the fact that the person has the right to occupy the property. So I wouldn't, for myself, I don't spend much time in my own head debating the question of whether um, whether whether that very special case of a legitimate tenancy, but an but an but but a non-present tenant. I, I just really don't think that's much of an issue in the case, frankly. If it were, I would find that I would find that the tenancy in and of itself um, means that there's, you know, that the that it has that the uh, non-conforming use hasn't been abandoned. But I don't really think it's much of an issue here anyway. So. So those are those are some of the, um, at least in my estimation, are some of the outlying issues that don't really shouldn't cause us much much problem. I think the harder issue is the harder issues. I think are, as I see them, are two. What was there an abandonment during the period of uh, two thousand twenty to twenty two, basically? Um, number one, and number two, whether there was a, um, whether the raising of the building constituted uh, a relinquishment, though unintentional, of the nonconforming use. And uh, if it was for, if it was raised for a casualty, then they can rebuild. If it was not raised for a casualty, they can't rebuild. No matter, no matter what the situation is with regard to uh, the constancy of the use of the property. I, I would also, I, I guess, another issue that I would indicate, which, which I, in my own estimation, is is not particularly significant, is the question of whether. Um, this is raised, I think, in, in People's Council memo, which is an excellent memo, but the, the question of whether the new house, the plan for the new house is an enlargement by reason of the by reason of the uh, very, 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 very modest um, enlargement of the, the roof or the, the windows and stuff like that. I, I just didn't think that amounted to much. So, so anyway, that's how I see it, though, at least in terms of what the issues are. Um, does that anyone want to comment on that or expand the issues or? I, I agree with you, um, Mr. Chair, about the non-issues, the first two particularly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems to me um, that we have to deal with kind of Legislative construction and abandonment of a non-conforming use uh, here. Um, and my thought in going through this was, was the non-conforming use abandoned for a year or not? And that's mm -hmm. the central question here. Right, we, right. We need to answer. Right. And if we conclude that it was abandoned for a year, then the argument then becomes, well, does this two-year provision kick in, if you will? You know, the 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 casualty. Okay. And in my thinking and reading the briefs, and all the briefs were very well written. I thought they really were. Yes. On, yes. on all all three council, uh, the council for all three sides just did a great job, a really great job, and I appreciate it. Right. The, the um, briefs were very looking, useful. Yeah. I see that the, the 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 how I interpret this, and maybe it maybe it's off the target, and you can help me if it is. But I see it as as the way the legislature set this up is. They said, "Look, if you're going to abandon this non-conforming use in a year, then
Michael, are you there? Hey, I'm sorry. I think I just. I, okay, everybody. I went out for there. about ten seconds there. I apologize. Okay. Anyway, uh, could, could, could Monty, you maybe Monty? start over, Fred? Could you start over? Um, yeah. Yeah. My thought is this: um, uh, that the way the legislation is constructed, in my view, is that if there's an abandonment within a, a year, it's clear you've terminated that that use, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. If within that year there is a fire or a casualty then the two years kicks in and gives you time to recover from that. That's how I looked at that, the, those two sections together. Okay. So I, I think the first thing we need to decide is if, if that one year uh, was exhausted or not, you know, if in fact they abandoned it over that one year period of time. And if they, abandon it over that one year period of time, then you go back to say, well, was there a fire or a quote casualty? And in this point, they're arguing that the casualty was kind of discovered, if you will, when they started tearing the walls down, et cetera. So that, that's kind of like, I, I gotta get that straight in my head and, and wanted to bounce that, those thoughts off of, off of the other members here. Well, I, I think my understanding is, is slightly different, um, and that is whether or not there's been an abandonment uh, because it's been vacant for a year, if you tear the building down um, for a reason other than a casualty, then you've extinguished the non-conforming use. Okay. Okay. So they can, they, they can be uh, alternative. And, and and to some extent, as you say, overlapping um, right. base bases for um, the extinguishment of a non-conforming use. I think. Okay. I, I mean, you know, the question of casualty. I, um, I mean that that doesn't actually require any assessment of credibility. Um, and I, I think it's just a question of whether, I mean, it was never clear why, what, what the problem was. Okay. Um, I mean, there's to some, some extent, you know, there was there were questions of, of water infiltration and there, there were questions of just, you know, old dated design features, um, I mean, Mr. Perlow said that water infiltration would would over time, over a twenty year period, in his in in his department's view, that's a casualty loss. I I found that um well, I was surprised at that um, because. I wouldn't left to my own devices. I would I would view casualty as uh, a sudden occurrence: fire, wind, rain, storm, you know, something like that. Um, I, I'm not. I mean, you know, I, I, it's a question of whether we're supposed to give any deference to the agency's view of what casualty is. I'm not really sure that what constitutes a casualty is something that's within the expertise of people in the zoning world. I think it's a legal term actually, more than a more than a zoning and planning term. I, I, I don't know that we are, but even if, in my estimation, even if we were to defer to the agency's uh, general approach to the question of casualty, I, I would reject it myself. I, I mean, I think a casualty is, you know, it's in, in the insurance sense, it's, it's an accident, it's a sudden occurrence, it's not slow deterioration over time. I think this is particularly true in the, in the case of, of um, 
non-conforming uses because the case law is so clear that one of the things that the uh, that the agency roots for is slow deterioration over time so that we can get rid of the non-conforming use. I mean, it's, it's you know, <laughs> that's something that's viewed as, as, a, as a, a, you know, they're so disfavored, these non-conforming uses, they're so disfavored that um, where there is this slow deterioration over time, that's a good thing because that gets rid of the non-conforming use. So I don't know why the agency views casualty the way it does, but, um, and it's, it's maybe nice of them, um, <laughs> but it, it, I don't think it comports with any common sense or legal definition uh, of the word casualty. That, that's, I guess I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve there on, on that issue. Um, yeah, I think that I think that once they tore the building down, they tore the building down, and you know, there's no, there was no casualty. There, there. I, I mean, we didn't hear about any, you know, insurance claim or you know, any anything like that that would, you know, you would think would be available if there was a casualty, casualty loss. Um, so uh, that's my view on that issue. I guess um, I don't know where you guys are on that but um no i i agree with you mr chairman as to almost everything that you said there with respect to casualty i, I think my opinion is that you know the dictionary definition is an event and i think that the week that that's probably how we should see it is it has to be an event um that this, you know, slow deterioration is foreseen in the public policy, um, and and that's kind of what happened here. And I think that um, that uh, even if it was a casualty, we have no idea when the casualty was suffered, and whether the two years had run since the casualty was suffered. You know, the casualty could have been ten years ago. We have no idea when. Yeah, I mean, it was discovered more recently right um but I, I still you have that two-year issue um well, and on top of that mr perlow also said that from the agency's point of view they would want the casualty uh verified by right by a right. recognized and licensed engineer that didn't occur here well no and we had no evidence of the casualty yeah, yeah, before right, or anything either right we right. you know we had testimony um but it was you know, uncorroborated by one of the parties. And, um, you know, he obviously knew engineers and knew to bring them in, but we didn't have any testimony from them as to the cause of the casualty. Um, and we also didn't have any testimony that the raising of the building was necessarily the thing that had to resolve the issue, you know, that, that there could have been you know, was that was that necessarily the thing they had to do to fix the problem? You know, well, I, I got the sense it was, but you know, the more they kept peeling layers of the onion off, peeling layers of the onion, they they kept finding more and more problems. That was my sense of it, but I mean, that doesn't ultimately matter. They tore the building down, right? Right. So, um, that's to some extent the easy answer to the entire question. You know, was there a casualty? The um, <laughs> the, the the other question of whether there was a, an abandonment or a, a, whether it was vacant for a year is the issue that uh, much of the hearing focused on. And it's right. The, it's the source of the um, discord, I think. Um, and it's also what generated most of the evidence. Um, 
I, I would be prepared to find that there was an abandonment for the requisite time, the one year period. Um, but it matters to me, for example, I, and, and I think I, I would find that the petitioners have the burden of proof on this. Um, you know, that, that we have to be satisfied by a preponderance of the evidence that the testimony about the, the tenants not being there was sufficient. Um, so I do think they have the burden of proof. But I also think that the whole thing has to be understood in the in the larger context of how disfavored non-conforming uses are. I mean, um, so I think that provides some relevant um, background music or something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I also was um, I, I was. Um, Quite un, I, I was unsatisfied with the documentary evidence from Mr. Pottles. Um, I found it to be confusing and radically indirect, um, and um, I, I would have expected some more informative documentary evidence, if that's how it was going to be, like a lease, um, like something showing, you know, bank records or, or ledgers showing the payment of rent, or uh, I would have thought maybe some, I, I don't know who pays the gas and electric bills, but. Bank statements or. Something. It would be it would be interesting to see what the utility use was like during all these periods of time. I mean, um, sewer bills. I mean, it, it, instead, this weird you know, there's this weird there's this weird thing with the with this eviction thing, which I mean, yeah, I, I the July or August order of restitution. Yeah, twenty twenty one. That's yeah. I had the same yeah. question. I mean, that that just is weird, I, I think. Um, and there only has to be one unit vacant. I think I think that's also fair to say. Uh, they don't both have to be vacant for a year, but um, but I think that the testimony from the neighbors on this point was convincing. I mean, there are questions of credibility that run throughout this in all kinds of different directions. Um, Make no mistake about it. Um, but on that point, um, I found them to be credible and believable. And it struck me it, it had the ring of truth to it. Um, the um, I was going to say something, and now I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, um, oh, the other thing, yes, the other thing. I, and again, this isn't something that I would hang my hat on, but it does, you know, the weirdness in the ownership and operation of this property was, I guess, of note. Um, the uncertainty about what exactly the Edgemere Wildlife Trust is and this, the owner and the owner's relationship with Mr. Pottles and the, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, that's all weird. Again, that's all strange. Now, I wouldn't make any ruling based on that, but I, I feel obliged to at least, at least note for the record that it's peculiar. You know, I don't know. I could, you know, that's just a personal view. It's, I'm not finding that there's a defect in the demonstration of ownership or there's or Mr. Pottles isn't authorized to testify and 
opposition to the petition. I mean, I, I'm satisfied with the, all the legalities, but his 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 um, vagueness with regard to his own relationship with the trust and the trustee and you know, it's just I thought that was strange actually. So yeah, um, I um, I had uh, problems also with the order of restitution from or July or August of 2021. And there was, I think, sufficient evidence that the property was vacated in June, uh, in January and then June of 2020. And right. then in July or August, we had this order of restitution. And I, 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 I just also was very hesitant about the credibility of that and 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 in some ways the relevancy of that um you know was there really someone there someone not there uh what other evidence could they have provided and it seems to me a very obvious one as you mentioned what would have been bank statements i mean you know you had to put the money somewhere i guess maybe you just if you know, if, even if it was cash, you had to put it somewhere, you know. So right. there, had to, there had to be a receipt or something, right? A receipt of some sort. I mean, you know, show us something during that period of time from June 2020 till July 2020, what where you know who paid what or who got what or whatever. And I did not see that. Uh and then this order of restitution shows up. And then later, uh, I think in August, the property uh, release agreement shows up. Right. And it's like um, that, that to me was not sufficient enough evidence that there was occupancy and use of that property over that year period of time. Right. And if you wanted to say that there was a lease by which the person had the authority to reside there and chose not to, then we need to see the lease. We didn't see it. And we didn't see a lease. Right. Right. So, you know, we can't really go there. Yeah. Um, I I agree with everything you gentlemen just said with respect to the evidence. And you know, I think that the evidence, the balance on balance that the property, you know, we have no evidence that anyone was in the property after you know, that summer, June of 2020. But, and I do want to say this, I, I don't know that the, the matter comes down to, first of all, as Fred was saying, I mean, sorry, Mr. Lauer was saying, um, whether it was occupied rather as opposed to whether it was leased, but honestly, based on the 2004 order, you know, what, what is the non-conforming use of the property? It's that the property be a multifamily house that has a duplex to apartments. And I don't see anywhere in there that says it has to be occupied, first of all, or leased. I mean, I, I, I kind of think that the non-conforming use is that it be a building that has two apartments in it, you know? Um, and I, I think, I, think so. I, I don't think you can go there. I don't think that works. I don't either. You, you use is the use is the is the key ingredient of, of a non conforming use. It's not just having an empty building that is a duplex that. It's only if it's used as a duplex. It's well, not, it's non conforming use, not not non conforming existence. <laughs> I mean, that may be, I, I just don't see that from either the law or the, the order from 2004. How would I it mean, ever I'm, be, how would it ever be extinguished? How would um, not being occupied for a year ever, ever not being used is really the point, not being used for a year. How would that ever come into play if use, if the use wasn't relevant? Yeah, it might never be extinguished if. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it could just exist as a, as what? 
an occasionally occupied building for well, a but it couldn't be used <laughs> as like an agricultural property or as a commercial property. It's used as yeah, a it would go back to a, a single family residential property after discontinuous of the use uh, as two dwellings. All right. I mean, I just, in my view, it doesn't have to be used as a rental property. And I, I wouldn't want to, I, you know, we, we've already said it doesn't necessarily have to be occupied. It merely has to be leased. And if it's merely leased and not occupied, then it's not occupied, but it's still being well, used. I mean, but if, if it's but leased, it's, it's being occupied. used. I mean, I don't want to put someone in a situation where they say, well, you know what I should do is grant myself a one year lease for the property for no dollars and I'm not going to occupy it and I'm still using it. Well, someone would have to be very clear. I think that's another scenario that you could look right. at. <laughs> but at least there's a lease there that we would have some evidence of use of, or at least a lease and a use of the property. Right. Or someone else's use of the property. I mean, is, I mean it could all be a subterfuge. Yeah. All, I mean, it would you be. Know, but but are we, would we allow that? And I, 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 would I, we I, allow I, that? Who knows? <laughs> Ultimately, I think once the building was knocked down, it didn't matter anymore. Yes, I think that's my opinion right. <laughs> is that the raising of the building without any evidence of casualty is enough to say they've discontinued the use. Right. Um, so that's kind of where I am with it. Yeah. Well, okay. I I think we have consensus then um, that. The answer to the petition for special hearing is yes, the the non-confirming use has been extinguished. It's been extinguished because uh, the building was raised without uh, in, without being in the context of a casualty. Um, and or um, there was uh, an abandonment for a one year period. Um, during the operative time period. So I think those are the answers to our questions, our main questions, and the I think the other issues. We we've clearly said that tenancy counts. Um, and I think that's important that we've said that. So the fact of a tenancy would constitute use. We just didn't see a tenancy here. Uh, or proof of a tenancy, good enough proof of a tenancy. Um, and then we also have dis dispensed with the you know early time period and we've dispensed with the enlargement of as an issue. Um, so is that all correct? Have I summarized that correctly? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, well then we will adjourn and an issue, uh, I mean uh, an opinion will be issued. Um, in uh, due course. Okay. Anything else? Anyone has Sharon. anything? Any, anything? Anyone wants to contribute? Anything? No. No. I'm I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Stelmach, you're good. Everything's. Yes, good. sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Good. Okay. We're adjourned. <laughs>